Hey, what's up guys? Alex here today, and today I'm doing a video series, actually. Um, this series is going to be on basically the upgrade uh, process of my Tokyo Marui High Kappa 4.3 Dual Stainless. Um, I have done a couple things to it already as is, so this is going to be like the part one of kind of what I've done to the gun. Um, I was recently in Hong Kong, so I went to Alpha Airsoft and bought uh, way too much stuff. Um, only one part has come in because I bought it one day and they shipped in. I went another day and then they shipped me more stuff, so I'm waiting on the other stuff to come in. Um, but this just started off as a uh, basic Tokyo Marui High Kappa dual stainless. Um, I bought it for really cheap. Um, I paid like $100 for it and it came basically brand new. Um, even had a recoil spring and a hop-up bucking, which was pretty neat, but I've already changed both of those out. Um, but basically, this gun is going to be my next project. It's probably going to be my new primary high kappa. Um, of course, I still have this guy here, which is still fantastic. But um, I'm really, really liking the 4.3 right now, and I think this guy's just going to be the backup for a while. So, the side. So, to get started, um, let's go over basically the things that I have upgraded so far. Um, to start off, the most noticeable thing is the Airsoft Masterpiece uh, CNC Advanced Frame. The, I did buy the STI model, so you have the 2011 markings right there. Um, the SV was cool too, but I really just, you know, everyone has an SV or the SV marking, so I kind of wanted to go with the, uh, the 2011 one. Um, but overall, it's a really, really nice frame. It's, it is an advanced frame too, and if you're not familiar with what that is, I can actually show you. Take apart this high kappa two to kind of give you a uh, visual on what's actually different between the two. So this is a stock Marui frame, which is extremely dirty if you can't tell. Um, I've cleaned it in a while, but this is a Marui frame. It was Cerakoted, which is why it's this color. But you can see right there that this is a TM frame. Um, the most noticeable differences you're going to see are that the frame rails go all the way down there's no gap in the middle so in terms of stability the advanced frames are way nicer um, the other thing you're gonna notice too is that you know obviously this is CNC aluminum and this is pot metal uh, not that these frames are bad but I do think that the advanced frames are uh, definitely superior I mean they better be for $200 frames um, the one thing you'll notice too is a big wear point with high kappas is actually right here where my finger is that's actually a big point where the hammer smacks into. Mine is pretty worn as well. You can actually see if you compare the two of where this hit. This one's almost completely gone. Um, I do have a hammer protection pad, so I don't need to worry about that at all. So, you know, if you have a normal frame and you want to keep a normal frame, you don't want to spend $200 in an advanced frame, make sure you get a hammer protection pad so that hammer doesn't smack the frame. It's going to be smacking the back of the slide. Um, and then the other thing too, on all these uh, TM high frames or just gen TM spec frames in general, the hammer assembly you kind of uh, pry, uh, you take off a screw and this whole side plate comes off, and you have all your hammer assembly in here. Uh, for the advanced frame, you actually have just two pins, and then you need the sole hammer assembly actually just comes out like this. So in terms of actually ease of use, um, working on the advanced frames is pretty easy. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the main differences. So material, obviously, and then also just uh, how they work in some certain uh, certain, certain ways. Um, so that's the most noticeable thing on this. Other than that, the lower frame is pretty much stock. Uh, I got the stock dual stainless trigger, which looks nice. I probably won't change it unless I feel like getting a flat face one. Um, stock hammer, stock safety, stock grip, all that stuff. Stock mag release. Do have my trusty Surefire, or not Surefire? That was bad. My trusty Streamlight TLR1 on here. Great light. Uh, this is my S. I do have a HL as well, um, but that one I usually keep on the rifle, and this one's my backup gun. Um, unless I'm using it as a primary, then I'm gonna be switching that off. But up in my slide, the slide itself is still plastic. Um, stock rear sight, and then I also have a front fiber that I got from my 
AIP set. Um, I really like this. It works really well. It looks nice. I kind of did like a bad gold paint job thing for the roof site. It looks stupid, but I got bored. Um, outer barrel, still stock. On the inside here, I do have a UAC uh, competition recoil spring and the UAC buffer or shock buffer kit. What that is going to do is first off short stroke the gun, which I really like. Um, it makes the recoil and just overall snappiness really, really fast. Um, and also it's going to you know keep impact really low back here. So um, normally high capos will crack near the site back here. Um, so what this will do is actually take a lot of stress away from the back over here. Um, if we take this guy out, my hop up unit still is stock, but I have a Maple Leaf gold adjustment wheel, then stock barrel, then on the inside I have a PDI W hold bucking, um, which is easily my favorite bucking. There's almost no competition to the PDI buckings. I think they're easily the best on the market for pistols, VSR 10s, you name it. On the inside here I have a UAC aluminum lightweight blowback housing um, and a stock TM nozzle which I'll be switching out for a garter. I just need to find it. I, I know I have one somewhere, I just don't know where it is. Um, the UAC lightweight blowback housing in this plastic slide, this thing weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, most of the weight's actually from this rear sight back here because it's like basically just like a thick piece of pot metal. Um, so over, uh, the snappiness of the gun is really, really, really fast. Um, and the overall recoil, because of how light the slide is and the uh, short stroke and the shock buffers, there's basically zero recoil, which is nice. Um, when you short stroke your gun, you'll notice that the slide only goes back to about there. It's so only just a slightly more than being able to take the gun apart. I could make it a little bit shorter, but I just I, I don't want to want to modify the slide catch because. Um, if I ever wanted to change it back to where it locked back, I wouldn't be able to. So, uh, other than that, the gun, that's pretty much everything about the gun. Um, just to name off the, the parts that are coming in the mail, I have an Airsoft Masterpiece steel hammer coming in, Airsoft, uh, UAC composition disconnector, which is supposedly supposed to make uh, your trigger pulls and just overall work of the gun smoother um, and a little bit faster. Um, and it's steel, too, which is nice. Um, I also have a Airsoft Masterpiece Steel Guide Rod. And then the biggest thing that's going to be coming in is my Tap Airsoft. Um, well, it's not actually Tap Airsoft, they're the distributor, but Ken's Prop. Um, he makes really, really great 3D printed slides. Um, I ordered his 3D printed, one of his 3D printed slides. Um, it's really, really nice. It's 4.3 length, but it does have a hybrid cut on the top here. Um, so the there's no actual the the way that works too is there's actually no sights There's just a spot for a cocking handle which it also comes with um, So there's no sights and then also with that hybrid barrel. I do have a uh, compensator built in um, So this is kind of be kind of be a race gun, but I'm gonna be using it for normal airsoft um, So that's gonna be super sweet and then also I'm gonna be replacing this UAC blowback unit most likely with my with a uh, the Ken's prop blowback unit that I bought as well, which is also 3D printed in about half the weight of the UAC one, or actually like one third of the weight. So overall, the gun's gonna weigh almost nothing. Um, got the aluminum frame and then the plastics there, the 3D printed slide, 3D printed blowback unit, and then I'm also have an airsoft masterpiece aluminum grip coming in, um, which aluminum really lightweight, not as light as the plastic one obviously, but it is gonna be stupid lightweight still. It's going to come with a mag well, a mag release, and all that good stuff. The slide is going to be pink, just because I wanted to kind of keep that trend going on with all my guns. Um, but the rest of the gun, I'm going to keep silver and black, because I think it's a really nice uh, color scheme. Um, uh, I need your guys' help, though. I, for the life of me, can't decide what I want to do for the slide catch safety and grip safety. Um, I know I want to get steel ones, I want to get airsoft masterpiece ones because I don't want any stock TM parts to be in this gun basically. Um, I don't know if I want to keep these black and keep that shade, and uh, the grip by the way is going to be silver so it's going to match the frame. Um, I don't know if I want to do like full silver, so silver, 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 and then have these three parts be silver as well. 
Um, you guys let me know what you guys think down in the comments if you want to keep it, if you want me to do that black and silver or just do silver and then pink. Um, but that's going to be pretty much the full build. Um, I don't have a lot else planned for the gun. I pretty much have everything on order and then the gun is pretty much going to be 100% aftermarket. Um, I'll have a 6 inch PDI barrel so it's going to go through the compensator give me a good FPS boost too. Um, and then I'll probably change the trigger. I don't know. It looks really nice as is so I don't really care that much. It's kind of like a, a fake puzzle trigger so they're not actually two pieces but it, they make it look like it is. Um, but as a short little shooting demonstration this is a Proin magazine. And that's like I said, doesn't lock back and there's no BBs as you guys saw when I showed you the hot flip unit. Nothing in the magazine. So, in terms of recoil, there's none. You can even look at the muzzle. And because of how light this slide is and everything like that, just how snappy everything is, um, it's really gas efficient. Like I can usually get through two or three of these uh, full of BBs for it to regas them, which is great. Um, you know, compared to my pink and gold one, which doesn't have a whole lot of recoil, but the gun weighs about twice as much. Um, also, clear. It just doesn't have that snappy. It it feels nice, but it doesn't feel. that nice um, so that is gonna be it for this video I'm gonna keep you guys updated on this whole process and when I get more parts and when I'm gonna film that um, I am going through moving right now so I probably won't be making the next video for a week or two um, well I mean I gotta wait for the parts anyway but yeah that's gonna be it if you guys have any questions or anything you want to know about high kappas or just general inquiries about high capos or gas pistols in general let me know down in the comment section below be sure to subscribe like comment all that good stuff if you hate the video tell me uh that'd be great um your criticism is welcome here um if you hate me that's fine i don't care okay hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys next time